Here's a fan theory. Ron is Dumbledore. This episode of Idea Channel is brought to you by Dropbox. So the problem with fan theories in worlds where magic plays a major role is that after not long, our rolling fan theory stone has picked up all of the moss. In the way Hannah Arendt wrote The Fox and the Trap about famed German metaphysician Martin Heidegger trapping himself inside a theoretical prison of his own construction, once as fans we begin theorizing in, around, and with story devices involving magic, we run the risk of building just such a prison. We explain magic with magic and justify the presence of magic with more magic, and our theories become not much else than stating things are the case because I said so, except over the course of umpteen wordy diatribes and countless treatises. Now, because I said so is a fine starting point, but not a good ending point for any theory, philosophical, scientific, fan, or otherwise. In the absence of any authority, because here, talking about fan theories, it is rare that the creator of a work will comment on them, and also arguable that they have any right to in the first place, but more on that later. Much much more on that later. In the absence of authority, we have to justify the conclusions of our theorizing somehow, and we do that by manufacturing and then defending coherence, much like what we talked about in the Pix or It Didn't Happen episode. Fan theories live and die by the presence or lack of coherence within them, not necessarily by the relationship that that coherence has to confirmation by authority. Such is how we'll frame the creator-spurned discussion about whether or not it's possible to say that Ron Weasley beloved and arguably most lovable ginger of the Harry Potter universe is in fact did not turn into was not magic and suddenly became but rather truly in fact is Albus Dumbledore headmaster and master wizard of Hogwarts an all-around seemingly great guy very lovable that Dumbledore. Ah, the first of many similarities. The theory goes thusly. First, based upon J.K. Rowling's physical descriptions, nose, hair color, big hands, long fingers, potentially eye color, and the same busted leg, there is lots of evidence to support Dumbledore generally looking like an older Ron Weasley. How did Harry Potter not notice this? Well, the theory suggests that Harry, while a brilliant wizard, may not be the most observant of eyeball havers. Two, both Ron and Dumbledore like sweets, but not just sweets. There's evidence which may conclude that they both have a fondness for cockroach clusters. Three, Dumbledore has the uncanny ability of knowing pretty much everything that's gonna go down before it does. The list of situations where his preparedness or foresight defy belief is too long to list here, but I hope it suffices to say that this theory forwards the observation that it's almost like Dumbledore has done this before. And four, a long list of passages, Draco singing Ron is our king among them, can be seen to presage the idea that Ron eventually somehow becomes Dumbledore. Source, if you want to read it in all of its glorious detail, here. So, as is often the case with theories of any kind, there are some holes here, perhaps as an effect of this fan theory being written in 2004, long before the conclusion of the series. First, if Ron is a time-traveling Dumbledore, why doesn't he prevent Fred's death? Speaking of which, how do we explain that each character has a different family? Why doesn't the Marauders map show Ron as Dumbledore, or vice versa? And maybe most importantly, why? and how. Through what magic or necessity does it come to pass that Ron and Dumbledore coexist and are, in fact, each other? Does Ron grow old and become the actual headmaster of Hogwarts under an assumed name and then time travel back to his youth to shepherd himself and his closest friends through their trials because in his experience of things the whole ordeal goes far further south than it should have? Is there an alternate timeline where Snape doesn't kill Dumbledore, thus breaking the facade of his allegiance to Voldemort, so Dumbledore, knowing he's gotta die by Snape's hand because of reasons, takes Harry out of the castle to find the first Horcrux so Ron can secretly fix the vanishing cabinet Draco was struggling with, thus allowing the Death Eaters to enter the castle which causes the battle with the Order of the Phoenix and sets up Snape to kill everyone's favorite beardy wizard headmaster? I don't know. Or maybe Ron has to pull a primer, or primer, I have heard it pronounced both ways, we can all be friends here, and effectively clone himself via time travel. While Ron Prime exists at present, Ron himself could exist some dozens of years earlier, thus owing to the simultaneous existence of Ron and Dumbledore, the same person up to a point, but also different people due to their different histories, in the Harry Potter story as we know it. Though this would make Dumbledore's seeming foreknowledge of events harder to explain. 
Unless the time travel cloning happened after the conclusion of the story and Dumbledore cast a spell so that, okay, nope, I can feel myself bricking up the exits. Let's not get trapped here. Now, I believe we are prepared to talk about the effect the word of the author god has or doesn't on the veracity of Ron equals Dumbledore, which Rowling has said explicitly is a quote, false theory. <laughs> And so, attempting to ride coherent on the fan theory road, trying to place all of these pieces one right after the other such that the path to Ron equals Dumbledore is clear, we confront the following obstacle, the following war rig of authority, the role of authorship in fan theories. We may fairly question J.K. Rowling's ability to amend her own stories. Does she have the authority to speak up about what's not made explicit in the work she originally penned? Are authored works always in progress, so to speak? Maybe no? Maybe yes? Maybe yes, but the author's input doesn't matter after a certain point, and maybe that point is different for different authors. Furthermore, we may also be led to ask if there are certain authorial proclamations we will or will not accept based solely upon their convenience. If we accept rolling statements about Dumbledore's sexuality, must we accept those about Ron not being Dumbledore, or about Dumbledore being death from the tale of the three brothers? Think about it. He has the wand and the stone, gives Harry the cloak of invisibility. It totally works out. Anyway, yeah, is it a package deal? I don't know. I can't shake a feeling that using author commentary for theory verification traps ourselves in that theoretical framework of our own making, excusing magic with magic. Except the magic doing the excusing here isn't focused by a wand. It isn't of the story universe, it's of ours. It's a because I said so spell, foregoing coherence for the magic of intent. Luckily, it's rare that creators comment on their own works in such a manner after the fact. Rarer still that they comment directly on fan theories specifically, but in the event they do, I think it's worth wondering what those comments do for fan theorizers. If we're looking for fan theories to be correct, that we hold correctness to be the holy goblet of fire, that's fine, but it also means that the vast majority of fan theories will never reach their final form. Sad emoji. If the point of a fan theory is to find new meaning in old works by reinterpreting their elements, by making them in some sense more fluid or mutable, expressions of authorial intent or confirmation can re-solidify those elements. Turning coherence to fact may be great vindication for the authors of the affected fan theory, but celebrating that transition to fact as the arrival, the pinnacle of said theory strikes me as odd since I don't think of fan theories as aiming for that goal. I see them as the audience, assuming authority, unconcerned with what the powers that be may have to say. But hey, maybe you feel differently. Either way, we all know that Hermione, not Ron slash Dumbledore, is the time traveler. Oh, unless after the battle at Hogwarts, Hermione gave Ron the time turner and he spent most of his future slash Dumbledore's past tinkering with its magic to make it safer to travel further than a few hours into the past, thus mitigating the potential magical danger visited upon the caster. What do you guys think? Is it possible that Ron and Dumbledore are the same person? And what is the role of authorial intent or author comments in fan theories? Is it important in any way that they are confirmed as being true? I'm in a hotel room. Let us know what you think in the comments and I will respond to some of them in next week's comment response video. In this week's comment response video, we talk about your thoughts regarding ad blockers. If you wanna watch that one, you can click right here or find a link in the doobly-doo. And hey, in case you were wondering, this episode of Idea Channel was brought to you by Dropbox. If you're designing, presenting, writing, or building, Dropbox makes it easy for you to work together on any file. Because hey, if you can work with anyone, anywhere, any way you want, the world will surely be full of more interesting things. Dropbox. All yours. This week's episode is brought to you by the hard work of these time-traveling Ron Weasleys. We have a Facebook and IRC and a subreddit links in the doobly-doo and two tweets of the week this week. The first from Kel Mateo who points us towards a piece about the Oxford Dictionary's word of the year which is the crying face while smiling emoji which, I mean, there's all kinds of discussion to be had about that. The place that I immediately go is emojis are words? What? And then the second tweet of the week comes from Nick Freimitt, who points us towards Contributor, which is a way for you to pay a consistent amount of money and instead of Google AdWords, get a thank you. Huh, had no idea this existed.